Hey, Yo, what's up? We're live, right? Right now? All the way live, B-side show, what's like we always on? do about this time. Yeah. Monday night, 8 p.m. Thank you all for tuning in as usual. Yeah, of My course. name's Rabbit, and this is... Daisy. And I'm Wacko. Little Miss Daisy. See this guy? See how he just smooth rolled in like that? That was That's awesome. how I do it, so man. Yeah. That's how I do it. He's like a ninja. You know what I'm saying? A yeah. one. Ninja, man. Hey, what's going on, dog? What are we doing in the front of the store, dog? I just want to let uh, I just want to talk about that. Oh real yeah, quick. first off, real six. Yo, check it out, man. So check it out with the '86 crew and everything like that. Make sure you log on '86 and co. Dot com. That's right. We are now called 86 and Company. 86 what? and the word A N D C O dot com. Check it out, man. Those what websites all fully up. You can go ahead and order gear. We got like some fresh, like two designs that are up right now. Uh, of course, my favorite one is the Jack Daniels one. That is dope. And, and yeah. not, not just because he designed it, but not just because you know I designed it's it. It's a fly it's shirt, drink too. It's a dope shirt. Yeah, yeah. We'll call that the uh, the Wacko Limited Edition shirt, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So limited. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Hey, but check it out. So make sure you guys go ahead and log on. Check out the website. It's up. It's fully loaded. We got the blog going on on that stuff too. So you can check out the events. We're working on a couple events right now as well too. We got a summer event that's coming up, man. So it's gonna be they're, really they're dope. They're coming real soon. Matter of fact, yes. by uh, probably by next Monday, we should have some more info on that show. Yeah. Well, once yeah, you get all the details finalized and everything like that, then it'll be, it'll be cool. No, it's just a mic. Grab the yellow one. Yo. But check it out, man. Uh, another thing we got also as well is um, our boy Jake yo, is on that yo. side. Our boy Jake is up on that side, man. Always handling it down and everything. Nice to shout out to that dude. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, that's pretty it. We're really with 86. We got the side going and some events coming through. So. 86. And one more thing. Um, I wanted to talk about what everybody did this weekend and i'm gonna start off because my weekend was great you know what i did what'd you do what did you get absolutely fucking nothing that's uh, nice that's no, good to do y- you know why though i needed some like rest i had to go to one of them classes that i don't want to get into on saturday morning so so friday i just chilled <laughs> friday i just chilled my people's oh so vicious alt um all them right there at the oh it's about the ghost right there at the at the uh, heat lab in Omani. chilled right there at the studio and then i went home and i did my thing i had to be responsible so i couldn't party this Good week job, man. i had to man i'm proud of you bro I'm yeah sometimes you, you gotta do it man you know what about you, Daisy? even you though I, I didn't like oh. it but <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What you do? What you do, Dave? Yeah, well, let's see. On a Friday, we dipped to Bakersfield, and we went to an event out there. Uh, it was Arkham City Nights. It's not a hookah lounge. It's pretty cool. It's chill. Smoke took all uh, night. Uh, all the way to Bakersfield, huh? Yeah, we're moving out there. Well, not literally, but some yeah. of our events are gonna be out there. In Bakersfield. Road tripping. Nice. Road yeah, tripping, some cow cow tipping over there and shit, man. Yeah. We're gonna road yeah. trip it. What would you get into, Wax? Well. I was working my ass off in front of a computer this whole damn weekend, so doing the website, getting the website done, and doing a lot of other cool stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it, dude. Making moves, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for those that don't know, you need editing, uh, photography, or videos. Get at the homie Wacko yeah. right here. Yes, yes, and yes. And now, since she's right here standing in the middle, I could yeah. poke her in the eye when I, I point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you're a little tall, so it might just go over her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's <laughs> probably safer this way. Yeah. Hey, check it out, man. We got Frank Nitty in the building, man. Yes, East sir. Sweets in the building, man. We're going to get yes, started sir. pretty soon. Um, we got Choice One On in the, the building. Yo, Choice One's up here. K Day up in the house, baby, right now. Representing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What up, Choice One? Choice one. Yeah, we, yeah. We, you you got to come through on your promise and get him that chef hat you were I, talking about. I know, man. I keep forgetting the chef hat, bro. This <laughs> is my boy right here. We're going to go ahead and change his name to the chef. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? One day we all should come dressed as like South Park characters, bro. Yeah, you yeah. just come as a chef. You know <laughs> what I mean? But he better come through. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Hey, he like, better come through. It. He's supposed to get you that chef hat, dog. You hey better man, come I got to get you that, dude. That's so hey, what's that slogan that I told you too, man? Fucking, uh, uh. Damn, how would it go? Fucking uh, choice, choice one, you know, aka the chef. S- something on a deck. He put it on his Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there it is, right there. It was a dope little tag thing, dude. I thought hey, it was get at the cool. homie DJ Choice One on Twitter, yes, man. Sir, you guys better yes, get yeah. at that, you know what I'm saying? That's the homie right there. Homeboy dropping some chocolate balls on those decks. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! And just so everybody knows, we on that positive vibe. 
We got our other DJ, DJ Zons, in the yeah. building watching yeah. Choice yeah. One spin. So that's how we get down, man. Ain't no hateration over here. Oh, hell so yeah, man. That's what we're going to do, man. Hey, let's get into this uh, quick commercial and come yes, right sir. back with Choice One in the mix, man. Yeah. B-side. Yeah, yeah. Get at us. What's up, y'all? It's Medusa. Yes, L.A.'s underground most wanted. Where am I? You know, I grew up with vinyl. There's the A side, and then there's the B side. I spun the B side, and I'm at the B side show. Whew, isn't that ironic? I want you to come on in, feel yourself, sit on down, check us out, and make sure you always spin the B side. Hey, welcome oh. back. B-Side Show. Yeah. Done it. Like we do every Monday. Uh-huh, at 8 p.m. As you can see, our next guest, he just got through beating somebody up and then came over here yep. to do his interview. That's real professional of you, Very dog. <laughs> Go ahead and let them know your name, homie. Hey, what's up? I'm Christopher Gonzalez from King's MMA right here in Huntington Beach. Born and raised right here in Southern California, and I fight for Southern California, man. What's up? Yeah. That's right, man. Hey, and just in case... They don't know what kind of fighting you do if they didn't like read the flyer. Um, what kind of fighting you do? Let them know, man. Uh, well, I'm a professional. I'm a black belt in Mexican judo. You know what I mean? She don't know if I got a gun. She don't know if I got a knife. You hey. don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> no, um, I fight MMA and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, jiu-jitsu jiu was my first. Actually, wrestling was my first love. Um, then I got to jiu-jitsu, and from jiu-jitsu, after I got proficient at that, I just started, you know what, let me work my strikes, and now I'm in MMA, and I'm doing it, man. I'm loving it. Nice. How, how many uh, uh, fights you got under your belt, though? Uh, from the streets, I got countless. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, legit ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all got some Not of those. Pepe huh? that you beat up California sanctioned. I've got one. I've just I've just begun in my MMA debut. Okay. Um, but I've got uh, multiple tournaments, um, a few um, gold medals, you know, um, second places as well for um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, such as Rapper's Quest, um, North American Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournaments, um, a lot of the local circuits. Um, actually, it's an international circuit. I'm part of um, Checkmat, Checkmat Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu team. Uh, we're the number one in the world. Um, so Kings MMA and Checkmat is what I represent. Sh shouts out to them, nice. man. Yeah. I, hey, I don't want no problems, dog. <laughs> hey, let me, let me ask you something real quick, man. Can you just kind of elaborate a little bit on King's MMA kind of give a little bit of a, a history? Just quickly, okay. give them an idea. Okay, King's MMA. Um, a lot of people might not be familiar with the school King's MMA. You might have heard of Shootbox. Shootbox is where um, greats like Anderson Silva, Vanderlei Silva, um, Shogun Hua, um, guys like... Um, Jason, what's his name? Mayhem Miller. I'm sorry, Mayhem for, Miller. For those that know MMA, those are some yeah. big heavy hitters yeah. right big there, man. Hitters. Hey, and you know what I was going to say is, um, before you finish, just real quick, uh, Wanderlei Silva followed back the B-side on Twitter, dog. So what? Uh, oh, that, that's no dope. No. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's my nice. God. That's dope. No, no, go I, ahead. No, I've man. had the privilege to roll with him, train with him. I was part of his training camp. I mean, sure, I'm a small guy. I'm a, a small fish in a big pond, but, hey, I'm swimming. I'm still swimming. I'm swimming with the sharks. Well, those dudes are, what, light heavyweights, right? Or? Those guys are light heavyweights. Yeah, yeah what what, uh, what division are you in or what um, uh, weight? I'm a welterweight. Okay. Um, those guys are, like, they're animals. They're beasts. They're legends in the game. And like I said, they're from um, originally was Shootbox. What had happened is that um, our master, Master Rafael Cardero, he came, um, he opened up his own school. He was the former coach of Shoot the Box, and um, he decided to make his own. And now he came home to Huntington Beach, and this place, it's a dreamland. I mean, everybody, everybody's there. We all know that this, we're living a dream life. I wake up every day, I'm at the beach, I go train, I go work out go eat and I hang out with my buds I'm nice. a man it's that a good view nice. but it's, it's a lot of work it's, it's a, a lot, lot of work, work but I love it I mean you can yeah tell. I mean I wouldn't be back every day every day is like my grandma's like I'm coming home limping <laughs> I'm limping and she's like but you go back every day I was like yeah yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> hey hey um, for those that can't see we don't have high enough definition here he's got a shiner and it, for all the most MMA fighters, the cauliflower ear comes Here's, with it, yeah. man. I, you know, that's how one time uh, uh, I met. I was on my way back from Reno. Oh, shout out to Guilty One, too. He might be in the chat room, man, because he knew Nitty was on. Um, I went down there, and uh, when we were on our way back in the airport, I, I met uh, um, Randy Couture. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now I, I kept telling my brother, man, I know, that's, I know that's a fighter right there. And I go, 
And I seen his ear, and I go, for sure that's Randy. And I went up to him. I said, what up, Randy? You always by the ears. No, yeah, look serious, for the ears, man. The warning labels. Warning they to the public. Kind of look at, don't mess with somebody who's got cauliflower ears. They yeah. got it for a reason. Yeah, because yeah. chances are they're not going to care. If you try to talk crap, you might get smacked up real quick. Hey, real you tough. know what? I know I know. Wacko has a couple questions because he's been on the road with you and stuff, or, yeah. you know, yeah. traveling. Yeah. I want to ask, what's it like with him following you with the camera, man? Does he seem like it's a weird, pervert huh? or something? Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a pervert. So weird. <laughs> I bet he has hidden cameras in your locker <laughs> in the shower. He just fixated like on the crotch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's all, when, you, he's he's all when you gonna put a singlet on? <laughs> I go, hey, when you guys take showers again? <laughs> <laughs> he's hey. like, wacko, my face is up here. Hello. <laughs> no, I'm excited to have him around. You know, yeah. um, I, I can't talk about it enough. You know, because um, I've had some crazy experiences in my life and. I finally came to a place in, in my point in my life where I'm like, you know what? I know I'm happy. This is my happiness. And I'm vo- very fortunate. Thank you, God, that you gave me this. Um, a lot of people, they haven't found their happiness in the world yet. And, you know, this is something I know I'm never going to stop doing. I'm doing it to the last breath. And, you know, and um, bringing him along, sharing these things, sharing with you guys, sharing this world. Man, it's a blessing, man. I just love to do it. Hey, hey you know what, though? We, we got a couple more questions. We're just going to get into a quick video right now. Uh, producer choice. I like to do that once in a while, dog. Dra- whatever, Dra- whatever Jack chooses, we're going to come back. i got a couple more questions, man. Sure. And then uh, who's getting choked out? Daisy? Oh, all right. All right. We volunteered Yay. Daisy to get choked out. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says he'll get choked. I'm going right. to use a rape choke on him. A rape choke. <laughs> Check, this. Check this out, man. We'll be right back with uh, the homie Chris right here, B-side. Oh, yeah, baby. What's going on, y'all? This is Master Ace. Brooklyn, New York City. EMC is my crew. My new album is called The Falling Season. Produced by the one and only Kick Beats of Los Angeles, California. That's right. Make sure you pick that up and support that. And always tune in to bsideshow.net for the real hip hop. Hi. All right, and we're back right here up on the B-Side Show. You know, yeah, yeah. We got a boy right here, Chris Gonzalez. King's MMA. MMA, man. Um, like, we were just talking, and we all got a lot of questions here because you yes. able to have a, a, a guest such as yourself, something completely different here on the show. I'm proud and to be here, man. We're able to yeah. go ahead and just kind of grind you with, with our... And you know what? And this is the first time Wacko don't try to get crazy, man, because he don't want no problems. Wacko, Wacko's getting wet right now because he's sitting next to an MMA fighter. Excited. He's so excited. That's why I was all like, you sit cherry, son. You sit cherry. <laughs> no, but seriously, man, I, I had a cool opportunity, obviously, to meet uh, some other fighters there as well. And then one thing that I noticed, though, is because, like, when I... I'm not so educated in, but I am getting educated now. And what I noticed, though, that is... is oh, that's cool, man. I'm, I'm good. Is it? Do they hear me now? All right, here. I guess we we'll switch back real quick. Anyways, hey. So what? Basically, what I was saying though is that, that I had an opportunity to go ahead and obviously, well, we're, you know, we're, we're doing this documentary and stuff. But you guys have like, you guys are like the, uh, as we, as you guys put it, the modern day ninja. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. guys are really tight as a family and stuff. When you guys come into to to the camp, you guys train. It's very, you know, professional and and. You guys are like a brotherhood, and that's what I got from everybody. You know, it, it's really interesting. It, it, it is, you know, it, it's we we uh, we pride on you know having that honor, you know, as far as because you know what we do. There's a lot of honor in it. There's a lot of glory. You know, there's there's nothing to be you know um, ashamed of, whether you win or lose, getting in a fight. You know, it's it takes a lot to get in there. You know, whether it's jujitsu, boxing, wrestling. Um, it's a one-on-one sport. A lot of sports, it's where you got your team. You know, somebody drops the ball or somebody misses a tackle or whatever. You know, it's not all on you. On competition like this, you know, whether it's fight one-on-one, it's just you and your opponent. You know, and it takes a lot. And, and in order for a fighter to be able to survive their own criticism of themselves, because we could be our own worst enemies, we need each other to be positive. And, you know, some days it's real tough. Some days I get my ass whipped. I mean, can I say that? I mean, yeah, yeah, you're yeah good. you can say yeah, that. Yeah. We so just got the we just <laughs> yeah. got that clearance this week. <laughs> yes, we're good now. Yeah, yeah some days, <laughs> some days, you know, is what is, uh, what my buddy Falcon says. He says, you know, um, some days you fuck the dog, some days the dog fucks you, and it's true, you know. But we just yeah, it's all about getting up. That's like real life shit, man. <laughs> that's like life <laughs> tapping you. You know what I'm saying, dog? That just reminded me of life. Hey, but check <laughs> check this out. Um, I have some some favorite. MMA fighters. I just wanted to know, you know, maybe some of yours look like 
some of the guys you looked up to um, that made you want to fight, maybe. But you know, I like 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 Spider Silva. Like I'm a fan of his. You know, um, I mean, I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, it'll come back to me right now. But um, some of my favorite fighters, I'll, I'll let you know after. But you're the okay. guest, and uh, <laughs> you're the guest. I can't Anderson's even think. Of, I can't even think of the name. I, I fucking had this already, dog. Because I, I love Silver MMA. He's one of the guys. He's one of my favorite fighters as well. It's like, man, you know, I actually, when I first started training, I really didn't follow it because you know I was always working, and it's just like me. I'm like really not a fan. I don't watch baseball, football. I'm like, you know, I, I'm not a groupie. I really don't watch it. But now that I do, it's like, okay, I got to get savvy with it. You know, know who's who. You know, I'm in places where I'm like, who's that guy? You know, oh, it's this and such and such. Oh, you don't know. So, um, yeah. I've, Anderson Silva, he's 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 one of the guys that he'll pop up and people are like, oh wow, you know he's, you know he's at our gym. I mean, we see guys like that. You know, it's it's not out of the norm for them to pop up. You know, living in Huntington Beach, you'll see Shogun Hu roll up on um on a beach cruise during the, during the camp days. You know, I mean, guys like Matt Horowitz, guys that you see are just monsters. Like, you wouldn't think that they would just be in normal public like that. <laughs> I will admit, MMA is a really rigorous sport. Yeah. Not necessarily the fighting aspect, but just the training aspect. Um, I like I like watching MMA mostly the women's side, like Chris Cyborg, oh and yeah, um, she's, a, she's beast. a beast. beast. She I seen her train a video where she's training. Like that is that woman like lifts like truck like tires like those <laughs> those tractor tires. You know what I'm saying? Like she lifts them and she she does work. I'm scared um, of her. I'm you know she of her. she's manly. <laughs> like she she did some work on a uh, Gina. Oh, yeah. uh, she was she, she's in a, in a movie now, but she's she did some work on her, you know, and that was so dope, like just to see some women out there. And no, but some, both of them are the bad, though. Yeah. Both yeah. of them, yeah. Gina, yeah. Uh, what's her? Uh, yeah, Gina there you Carano go, Carano, and Chris yeah. Cyborg. They're both really dope. Like I love watching MMA. As a matter of fact, when I first actually started watching it, I was like, wow, this is like, is this is it, is this on TV? Like, is this allowed? Like, <laughs> this is like some National Geographic type stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I was so like, primitive. no, you know what? Now that I actually had some training in it, and it's really dope, like. Knowing the moves and how to get in and out of things, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, they don't see, they don't realize when it's on the ground and they're doing the grappling. Yeah. Um, I used to be one of those guys way back in the day watching cage fights at, you know, some casino. Get up, you pussy, you know, talking shit. But, you know, there's a fight on the ground. You don't know if the guy's trying to defend a choke, defend his, getting his, an, his hand yeah, broken, his foot broken. Yeah, you just see him in a weird pretzel You know, yeah, it looks position. like a pretzel, but it's a constant. I mean, it's There's a fight going on within the fight all the a, time. You fight for every Yeah, inch, and, and then every all, your mind has to always yeah. be thinking of their Absolutely. next move and, it's, and stuff. We call it jiu-jitsu, human chess. I mean, yeah. it's, it ain't checkers. This is chess. We yeah, do it we do it to get to a point where we, we could potentially kill you, maim you, break your hand backwards. You know, it's or, crazy. or <laughs> choke you out and just <laughs> put you to sleep. Hey, hey, what do you think about that one coming up? I wanted to ask your opinion on the uh, Jones and uh, uh, Evans fight, man. That's gonna be real dope, right? Um, they used to be uh, trained together, right? Uh, you know what? I like I said, I really don't know too much, but uh -huh. I know that um, Richard, Richard Evans and uh, I'm gonna be going for John Jones. John Jones is I a. Will be going for did John you see Jones. the one where he choked out? What's his name? Uh, the with the guillotine. With the and that dude's dope, but he choked him out standing up. What's, yeah, the, yeah. what's his name? Ah, oh, man. I, now I'm fucking. I can't think of any of these fucking. Yeah, but he choked man. him out with the guillotine. Wacko, ask a question. <laughs> Rabbit, you need to calm down, fool. This guy's getting up and just. He's so hyped right now. <laughs> I know, huh? He's already like. <laughs> this was already like, Dad, damn it, damn you, choice. <laughs> <laughs> Starts throwing the mics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I what I do want to bring up is um next weekend um next Sunday April fifteenth at yeah. Samurai Pro we're gonna have two fighters fighting Corey Kelly and AJ Detweiler uh, two brothers of mine two brothers brothers in arms we're uh, we constantly sharpen each other's you know edge every day so um, come out and support come out and see it uh, we're gonna be having a documentary coming out in which Wacker was um, putting together for us and nice. I'm very I'm very glad he could be a part of it you know it means a lot you know to share a little bit you know if anything to you guys you know in public and you know family and friends and everything yeah yeah man do. it's a really interesting culture dude and i say culture because i mean it is there's is really a lot of like mental physical but most mostly it's just the respect and the passion for for the roots of it and yeah. that's what i got a lot from all the fighters there's a lot of people from different walks of life that um they're at our gym you could look at his line us up and you can say wow you know this guy's looks like this he looks like this this guy looks like this and you can obviously see that we don't have the same upbringings um but we have a common thread you know the fight and you know that that's our equalizer you know i've i i, I train with with cops you know ex-convicts 
um, military, you know, special forces, firemen, teachers, um, you name it. You know, it's everything just when you get on the mat, you forget about everything. Nobody's better than nobody. I mean, and that's where it's like we actually learn stuff, how to be humble. Hey, you know? hey his, his point is, is that this dude, don't misjudge the dude with glasses walking For with a briefcase <laughs> because he might be on right. his way to MMA training. He's just exactly. walking like this and yeah. you come up trying to get crazy. He's going to bust your ass. Pay man. attention to that's the real. ears. Pay that's attention real. to you know the ears. Saying? Next Pay time we get a bar fight, you don't be like, what? Fool? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, we're cool. Hey, any <laughs> shout-outs you want to make before we go into the video? Uh, yeah, shout-out to all Kings MMA fighters. Um, a lot of guys that can't be here, Taylor, um, Tyler, Corey, um, AJ, Gabe, Kiana Rain from um, Verdum Combat Team. She's also one of our training partners. Um, on those female aspects, Jessica Penny. Um, and our professors, of course, Joao Assis, which I would like to bring here another time if I can. Joao Assis yes, is you know, a yeah, tech man. Oh, you Black guys Belt, can come back. Lucas Leitch, all everybody that I ever trained with, guys, from even before I moved back here to LA, because I moved ori originally to Inland Empire when I was younger. Now I moved back to LA. Um, trained with the guys from Lenny MMA, Gauntlet, the homies from. Um, upland team three it's all one big family the whole fight squad everybody knows me you know i they're all my brothers you know they're all my friends you know coming from the world that i came in came from i had to separate from a lot of things and um getting in this world i had thought back i was like damn i have no friends anymore you know <laughs> <laughs> you got new friends now <laughs> yeah huh? yeah now i got a whole family yeah, of friends family now, now. And it's, yeah and it's cool it's we're all on the same on all on, on the same path you know which i love it man you are who you hang around with man and i believe yeah, in that dude you yeah, are who that's you hang right around with, you know? and he's going for uh success and knockouts huh yeah, yeah why check check <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got we got Frank Nita is here too. Hey, it's like I'm, I'm to the point where I'm letting people know about it. A lot of people don't know, but let them know. Now that you got your goals, let them know how I know you and where it all. Wow, well, we go way back when. Wow. Back in you know, it, I was in the gutter. Just gutter, for those that didn't know? hear that, oh, Frank Nitty man actually goes way back with the homie Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First time I met yeah. Frank Nitty, man, it was back. You know, I was you know on that thuggish life. You know, back in the day <laughs> in Southridge, Fontana, California. Um, I met Nitty back in one of the, you know, one of the homies' pads and everything. And then years later, I ran into him in the studio. And then, you know, back when I was, you know, recording engineer with Groove Click, Westside Bug, my brother, um, met a lot of cool cats. Frank Nitty was one of them. He was one of the guys, you know, low lights on the grind every day. You know, I was literally sleeping in the studios. You know, you know, seeing cats like this every day, show me love. You know, I was broke, didn't have nothing. You know, but. Hey, we also love, and you know, I got much love for Frank Nady. Glad to see he's doing good, seeing his videos and everything. It's coming up, man. He's doing these phoners dreams, just like we started way back when. It, man, it's nitty gritty. Hey, check this out, man. We're going to get into this literates video. Welcome to the dark side. Woo! We're going to get into this and come right back with the homie Frank Nitty on the B side. I hope you guys didn't eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, this is cool. 187. You know, I'm chilling at. I'm in my town. West Covina, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to put y'all up on everything because I always do that because that's how the black Superman, the black godfather do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling at the B-Side shop on the B-Side show. What y'all know about that? Rest in peace to my man KMG and Easy e Tupac. I love y'all. Boom. You know how we do it. Ah! Brady Style in the house, yeah, yeah. E Sweets in the motherfucking yeah. house. Young Blue at the motherfucking house. <laughs> yeah, we in the building. Choice yeah, we trying to house. save your children. Yeah, <laughs> you better listen to us. Yeah, hey, hey. oh God, we trust. Yeah. If you didn't need an intro, you got <laughs> one anyways, man. Let them know who you are. Brady Style, Frank Needy in the motherfucking building. And when I say motherfucker, I don't mean that like that. I'm just really, really hyped right now. You know what I'm saying? My cat's in the building. You know what I mean? And they're getting it in. It's a good vibe over here. We here. We in the building. We about to let y'all know exactly what's going on with the movement, with the gritty style, the black and brown, how it started, how it formatted, where we going. We're going to talk about the future. We're going to get into politics. We're going to talk about the new future of California named Young Blue, who is 100% Rasa. We're going to talk about East Sweets, the first lady of gritty style. And we're just going to be real humble with everything we doing e, e sweets is in the building too yes you'll yeah. see it real soon hey yeah, uh, yeah. check this out man before we get into you know the whole movement and all that i just want to know um you know what do you think about the current state not not just that you know 
overplayed, oversaturated radio stuff. But even the underground scene. I mean, what you what you thinking about it right about now, man? I think the um the underground motivates me more than the mainstream because it's it's more you can you you can understand the hungriness behind it. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of artists is really hungry, and the, their only outlet is to make music. You know what I mean? You think of a nine to five, and you think how the government is trying to trap people and and take their houses away from them. You know what I mean? And raise the taxes, and then take away the insurance and the health, and then they got the 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 the. You know, it's just it's just real political, but I understand. And the they got me more. taking some classes right yeah, now you know, on the weekend. Yeah, shit. you know, you you got to do all that. So <laughs> these I mean, when you think of it like that, it's more like. I feel the underground and the mainstream is straight slipping and that's how gritty style formulated because we understand the weaknesses of the mainstream and we are involved with the mainstream but what we're going to do is we're going to do the trickle down theory and we're going to collect all the positive people and we're going to claim one movement and form one football team one baseball team one basketball team and show these people that color is not an issue and show these people that we have to stick together especially in southern california the black and the brown is like the 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 it's like the golden child of california and we have to bring the people together especially on especially on west coast dog i mean we're the 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 mexican and brown and uh, mexican and black the is the majority. main we are the, the main minorities um which probably are not minorities we're, we're anymore, not minorities anymore. anymore. <laughs> well, see, the whole thing is and, and i'm blessed to say this because i'm black and i'm mexican and i was raised on my mexican side so as far as politics I know the whole game. Yeah, yeah. California belongs to Mexico first and foremost. So you bring in all these other cultures inside California and then you wonder why it's five to one. You feel what I'm saying? And see, but they're not gonna promote that. And then they wanna put this wall and they trying to separate Mexico from California when this whole bloodline is all straight Rasa. You feel what I'm saying? And it goes back to the Mayans and the Mayans used to be slaves just like the blacks used to be slaves. So. You know, we we on that level right there. So you already know, California do belong to Mexico for anybody that's listening that really don't understand your politics. So you know, I do the math. I have a question, real quick. Yeah. I mean, for some people that don't know, like myself, what do you mean by Rasta? Like, what I mean, that? I mean the. Um, oh, oh, you mean like the Mexican word Rasa or? When I say Rasa, I mean a bloodline, and okay. the bloodline right. goes okay. back to the Aztec warriors. And it's just a straight bloodline because there's so many different people that's involved with this bloodline, but they're all segregated. It's like United States of America. You got 50 states in one little area. So they're all dividing you. But Ross is a bloodline. It's a brown bloodline. It's an Aztec bloodline. It's a warrior. It's a spiritual bloodline. And that's my definition of it. You know okay. what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So we in the building. We fuck you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, we are. We yeah. are here. All of we us. We some warriors and shit, man. Yeah, that's real warriors. Is, you know what I'm saying? Real warriors, prediction. Hey, hey. Yeah. For, first of all, too, um, young young blue couldn't make it tonight, but he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, yeah. meeting his responsibilities you right know, now. This show started at eight o'clock, yep. and we figure like young blue get out of school around three or four o'clock. So, you know, he got to do his homework, and on top of that, he's doing a Trayvon Martin uh, tribute song because he is the young generation, and he feels like this song is real important to him so he wants to for all those that's out there when y'all hear this young blue version of trayvon martin because we feel like he is a visionary for the young generation and i think that it, it'll be a good move for him to speak his opinion because the youth and the young generation in california do have their opinion on these politics you and, know I, what I mean? and i wore my hoodie and everything you yeah know you gotta saying? wear your hoodie hey, hey, i didn't wear mine because i ain't trying to get shot nigga. <laughs> fuck that nigga, don't real. shoot me i already got the, the, the shirt the nigga yeah, already we, look like a gang we, member we got a minority right here we don't know what he might do yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? so. oh yeah <laughs> Guy can't even talk to shit to him. We're hoping yeah. he don't. Hey, we're hoping he don't bust out. A, the homie over yeah. there don't bust out a white hood and shit right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, check hey, this I'm, out. Hey, check yeah. this out. I wanted to ask you though because Young Blue couldn't make it. Um, I want the homie has um, you know, for his age, he has like complex, not just the lyrics, dog. I'm talking about his thought process and stuff. The way you know, um, he's talking about things that probably he should be talking about talk you know about, what i mean yeah. but he should be though yeah and, but i'm i'm saying like where does that come from is that like how he was brought over he just hits the bully just you a know, smart kid or I, I tell you like this and a lot of people don't understand because a lot of ogs is too busy too busy in the sodom and gomorrah lifestyle but see me being an og and being the person that i am when i see talent 
and I feel it in my heart and my soul, then I'm going to put 100% energy into it. And when I met him, I felt his soul. And I felt like he could be the future. But the only way the youth will be the future if we put enough energy and time and communication and letting them know between the real and the fake. And when you hang around Gritty Style, because our movement, we're like a university. All we do is talk positive. We're on a whole nother level and people know it. They feel it. That's why I'm here. You know what I mean? You hit me up like, Nitty, let's do this. And I'm like, you know what? This movement really needs to be promoted the correct way. And I feel like I'm going to get that to y'all first before we surface. Hey, and when I and talked to you thing. earlier, I said, <laughs> Nitty's like, you know, we're going to talk about it all. And I'm like, man, I'm already knowing. What do you think I yeah. asked you to come on the show? Yeah. Uh -huh. you nah, that's good. Because, you know, sometimes I ain't going to even lie. Like, I go to, like, certain interviews and I be like, Man, don't ask to interview me if you don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I fuck around and lead the whole interview. I could talk for like four or five hours straight. You know what I mean? I got a lot of shit to talk about. I got I got a lot of shit. From political shit, to the streets, to this, to that culture, to this culture, to the state of hip-hop or where it's going, to about Sodom and Gomorrah, who's running the game, and the people that's running the game. Why are they running the Computer game? Computer chips in your oh, neck, man. RFID. You know we on all that shit. That's 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 a real gritty movement. You know what I mean? And it's nah, fun. Man, that shit is yeah. that shit is coming in a real way, man. Oh I man, it's coming. We so scary, y'all. So all y'all people that's out there, and I study music. You know what I mean? I listen to a lot of you people's music, but I'm gonna tell you this. I didn't hear one thing about God on your. And, and if I do hear it, it's probably like one song. I don't hear nothing positive, and that's how I know when we push our music. And if you ever hear anything gritty style and it's not positive and it don't have a direction and we're not talking about something deep, then come get at me, homie, and I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars. Yeah, if you ever you do if that. anybody out there ever hear a song from Gritty Style or our camp or our artist that's official and we putting out something and you can't learn from it, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars. And I got over thirty songs in the computer right now. You better make and, a song. And I right got now. bread in my pocket right now. Uh, and on my mama, I will give a nigga like a hundred dollars a pop if you hear something you not positive. Do you, do you think yeah. you can send me the whole collection so that way I go home? Yes. Right? You know what I'm saying? So that's the challenge of the internet right now. You find something positive from us. Hey, hey, you don't find no real. If it's not real and you don't feel it's real and you yeah. tell me and you give me your conviction why you don't feel our music is real, I give you a hundred dollars on the spot. And you don't even have to meet me. If you're in Australia, just email me and give me something. And I'll make sure I go to MoneyGram and wire you $100. That's that's what this gritty style movement I, I, all I'm about. I'm trying to go to Amsterdam, G. Hey, yeah. <laughs> check this out. We're going to get into this uh, Sport Dank, One Mile Away, featuring Badass and Frank Nitty. And come right back because we got some more questions for Nitty, of course. Yeah. Let's check this video out, man. What up, Badass? I hope he's in there somewhere. Hold on, hold on. Can we, stop? can we stop this before you play that? Yeah, yeah. Is there any way we can just not play that and play a young blue? Oh, that you want it like that? DJ yeah, Choice let's One. Let's do that. Wait, wait. DJ Choice One is spontaneous, man. I already know he is. He <laughs> on that real shit. <laughs> I want to play something deep. I don't even want to spend my okay, time okay, with let's go, let's the go. one mile away. That was one mile away. We already 30 miles <laughs> in the future. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, shit, whatever. You, ch you, you pick your number. You can start from number to whatever you want to play. All right. There we go. Check this out, exclusive <laughs> right here on the B side, man. Yes, That's sir. Like we're spontaneous, real live. Let me. What is this? Oh yeah, this is called my life from Young Blue. Can I introduce this? Go for it. Before we play it, for all those out there, I'm gonna tell y'all something right now because this whole gritty style movement is this song right here, and we might even all have to be quiet and listen to the way that the young generation is is doing their music right now in our camp. So play that, DJ. This is called my life, Young Blue. Yes, sir. Trip Cho out on this, though. Choice one is spontaneous. Mm. B-side exclusive. This is my life, oh. Streets ain't give me no game, no. I live my life in one lane, so. I never be worried about what they do. Cause this is my life, oh. Streets ain't give me no game, no. Yeah. I live my life in one lane, so. I never be worried about what they do. Oh. 
My life, my hustle, and my time. And since I murdered this music and call it my crime, soaking up intelligence, anything that's matter. Close your ears and your mouth, cause only your eyes matter. Any source of energy never dies, it transforms into an angel, a demon. If you were lost, so life in a game, surviving through all these obstacles. That bad karma flowing, you didn't think it was possible. Reptilian bloodline pumping through your heart. Exchange your soul back to human if you play your part. Don't blame me, this is only information I heard. I got a feather on my shoulder, should've killed that bird. I'm a teen, you can never understand my feelings but they never interact cause they just fear my dealings contaminating the future this is only the example never die living in this world could be a gamble this is my life oh the streets ain't give me no game no i live my life in one lane so i never be worried about what they do cause this is my life oh the streets ain't give me no game no i live my life in one lane so i never be worried about what they do who is you to tell me about mine? The devil is always trying to rain on my shine. I'm destined to be a soldier ready for any war. My mission is to gather and reunite these souls. My plan is to stay alive and keep the bloodline running. Cause the devil is alive, I know the evil is coming. I happen to stay away from any negative manner. We got life on the ground, I'm climbing a roof ladder. Trying to make it a space and hop in my own dimension. Cause there ain't no positive humans in this section. So cold, our generation lost in a time. You gotta open up your eyes and stimulate your mind. We the new school dropping these game bombs and all of you just stay humble with it and lead those who follow you and don't you criticize me cause only God judges while I keep myself this free this is my life oh the streets ain't give me no game no I live my life in one lane so I never be worried about what they do cause this is my life oh the streets ain't give me no game no I live my life in one lane so yeah B-Side Show exclusive right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rise of the sun. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, yeah. I, I got I to gotta ask you something real we quick. We do here. exclusive shit here, dog. Man, was, nobody heard that before. I just keep, I'm going to keep that, that right? 100. Ain't nobody heard that. No. Hey, how, how, how old is this cat again? He's in a 15, 16 generation. All right, check this out, man. Just from, like, the lyrics of what I'm hearing, dude, like, his mentality is beyond the age of 15, 16. The reason why I say Bless so is because, him. like, you know, like, what we do, we're around the youth. We're all yes. around the youth and yes. stuff. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh -huh. but a lot of them, I don't want to, I don't mean to talk shit or nothing, but yeah. there's a lot of ignorance because we're we'll being talk. fed, okay? Yeah. But to hear a young cat like that coming from this generation now where everyone's shuffling and yes. everyone's all sitting like, er, der, er, der, er, der, and so forth like that. Yeah. I am root. I, I, I really that that really shocked me because I want to talk a lot of shit and this guy right here this kid right here really changed my perspective on it to actually yes, like sir. really uh, visualize like there is hope for the youth man yeah there is hope for the fucking youth exactly dude. we might be okay after all well, I got then, scared but actually hearing that you know what it is man this I'm gonna really tell shit. you like this and it's 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 so simple homie because this gritty style movement is like an arc and and the people are gonna understand we're here for a different reason. And you can almost look at us like aliens because we're here for a message. And Young Blue being the youngest member from Gritty Style, that's just letting us, that's just letting you know the little homie getting it in. He's already chosen. It's just certain souls and it's certain people, even like Tupac. There's just certain talent that God puts on this earth every so often. It's like leap year. You don't find certain souls that come on this earth for a reason. And when they do, and if, if it's in, it's just like when Jesus came, he was just like that one. And everybody was just like, damn, not saying it like that, but I'm saying young blue is a, is a pearl. And you know, that's a diamond in the rough because you don't find young generation people. Not talking at all. Like that's that. why I say, but that, I'm going to tell you like not this, that's how we get down in the gritty style camp. We're all yeah. on a different level to hear, you your, what I'm to saying? hear the youth of the camp on that aspect there. Yes. I already, you know, obviously have respect for yes. the, the older yeah, generation that cancel. Yeah. And it's hard because like that, you know what you know what it is? We're against all the negative out there. It is true. And it's more negative it's than there is positive. But one thing about Gritty Style and me, I'm a frontline soldier. I'm a positive goon. And I'm gonna be the one on the front line before any of my homies. And I'm gonna risk my life to let people know that this positive movement is real. This black uh, and yeah. brown is not no joke. And we're gonna push this line whether people like it or not. Well, you, you know, you what, know what? Hey, everybody. Yeah. It, I mean, it's coming, dog. I mean, there's a lot of that. 
you know tension comes here and there but i mean on the on the hip-hop note dog because i study the game myself yeah. dog I, i'm about this shit and yes, sir. And, and and this shit everybody's realizing now dog that's the only way we're gonna really make some noise make some positive noise though everything they show you already know man we could we could talk about this too but everything they show on the you news know, is negative shit dog you know i, I, I you tell you I mean? like this rabbit because a lot of people don't really know Frank Nitty, homie, and I helped a lot of Chicano artists get to the level they are now. You know what I mean? And, and the biggest of the biggest, from high power to down, lean like a cholo. You know what I mean? I was behind a lot of them people getting it in. And all their features with Snoop and Nate Dogg and Twister and, you know, all these different people was me. I was playing this position and I always felt because I was black and Mexican and my mom was from Chihuahua, Mexico. You feel what I'm saying? I always felt like this was back in 2000 when people were scared to, to unite the black and the brown. I was doing this. My first artist was down. Kilo, lean like a cholo. You know what I mean? And I always look Check at it like this. the video. This. You see the mean cameo by the homie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm in there. If you really look at that video, I'm in there. But see, the thing is, nowadays, is people don't, I don't really get the props that I deserve, but I'm kind of cool with it because I always wanted to be in the back, behind the scenes kind of guy. I don't want you to say my name. And sometimes I tell people, don't say my name. And I was always smart because I didn't want to be attached to nothing negative at the time. I didn't want to be attached to Sodom and Gomorrah. So when it was like, hey, Needy, I'm about to do the show, I'd be like, well, what was the song? Remember that song you hooked up with Whoop the Whoop? And I'd be like, don't even, no, don't say my name. Just do your little thing. I like you know how I mean? you reference everything yeah. negative to Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah. Yeah. For some people that don't know what Sodom and Gomorrah is, it was a really bad city. Like, yes. Really bad city in the biblical days. Yes. It was rampant with <laughs> sexual disease and Every, all kinds yes, of things. Exactly. So I, I like how you use a lot of biblical things to your business right now, how yeah. you represent God in the most positive light and mm -hmm. then everything else that's negative is just everything else that's negative in the biblical yeah, and I, I feel like I have so. to do it like that because I feel like, like me, how I talk, I'm graphic, I'm animated. Like, that's why I'm a good teacher. That's why I could be around the youth and be around my first female artists and be around, you know, photographers and anybody that I embrace. I have a way of teaching. So people are going to feel drawn into me because I'm smooth with it and, I, and they understand this visual. And that's why I have to bring back the, 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 the stories in the Bible, because if you don't understand, if I tell you about Sodom and Gomorrah and you don't understand it, then you're not on, even on my level. Like, I don't even care yeah. about you. You yeah. can hate on me, but if you don't understand the rules of life and understand the difference between the Old and the Testament, whether you believe this book or not, if you can't tell me no stories of the most talked about book in the history, history of, of man, mankind. of humankind, yeah. of humankind. Because it's deeper than man because you got women. Exactly. You feel what well, I'm saying? Well, women are, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, women is smarter than man. Well, it's yeah. a some level. It's a some yes. level. No, women is smarter level. than man. For people that say, don't know it, the men. woman species, that's that's why she is a woman. man. She was made second. See, You're a man see. with a womb that can create. So, yes, you're going to always be powerful than a man. And that's where East Sweets come in because we have every generation locked yeah. down. We got the young generation to represent them. We got the female generation. We got this generation and we got all our ends You, you know, down. speaking of East Sweets, let, let's get into a track real quick and then come back with East Sweets too, man. Yeah. Let's do that, man. Uh, let's do that, yeah. I, I want to talk to East Sweets real quick, man. Yeah. I, I, I love the ladies and I want to talk to East Sweets. Yeah. Hey, check, <laughs> hey, check, check the, wow. <laughs> See, well, good thing we're co-hosts. We like yeah. to mess with each other here. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> but check this out, man. Uh, w w which song are we going to play, man? Um, I'm so confident. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. Put it on um, Put it on the first CD, the new election. And put it on... Um, can you play it live? I want to hear it. Oh, yeah. We're going to yeah, play, play it that live. Let's, let's go through number one. I want them to hear number one, but I only want them to hear the... Well, we need a song about three minutes, huh? So we can just talk. Yeah, yeah, and then and then we're All gonna right. come back with these sweets. Put it on number. Um, that's my request. Oh. Put on number <laughs> two. Let me hear what that's like. I'm about y'all giving this real live because this is off the. Oh, this no, is this off is the Young Blue album. Hell yeah, it's, it's called it's the live. New Election. And yeah, got, and we, we gonna got go ahead and play this. Mix, hey, y'all gonna trip out on this? I even want y'all to hear this because it's about yes men and listen to this structure of how he did this. Listen to it. Turn it up, baby. Yeah, I'll be right back. 
Checking with the left hand, recognize the soul when they coming from a strange land. We are trying to push them real fast because you have to stop. Yeah. Hey, we still want to get here too. Oh, yeah. Is it right here? Tell me right here. Whatever. Hey, go ahead, Drac. Strange land. Quick commercial. We'll come right back with Nitty and E Sweets. Wow. B side. Yeah. Call it a movement to me. Vintage 1989. Y'all know what it is. I represent that old school ruthless. Easy E, rest in peace. This the legendary cocaine, known as the most featured artist in the game. King of G Funk, you heard? Kicking it, ride on B side. We stay on point like Stacy Adams. Where's? So he could just spontaneous, he could do it anywhere. And I, when he came out, we first met and, like, you know, I played it off like, oh, how nice to meet you. I didn't want to. 